and i wish that this video will reach out to at least 500,000 Ghanaian women so that after that you see your men you kiss them you will love them you appreciate them some more i know you guys value your men you value everything about your country but it's going to triple when you see this video hi lillian here and i believe you are subscribed on the 15th of october of 2024 i will be officially three years old on youtube i mean since i started doing content about this amazing country called ghana and I, if you observe carefully you realize that I have been been particular about one thing in Ghana that I love so much that makes me feel like maybe is the reason why God is rewarding Ghana with peace in abundance and that thing has always been me talking about women and how women are being treated in Ghana uh, but you know sometimes you see people trying to twist your story you see them trying to act confused you see them pretending not to understand what you're talking about you know everyone acting confused what she's saying because nigerian men are known to be the best in africa when it comes to relationship no i'm not talking about relationship i'm talking about being a woman and being a human just woman as a human yeah so i've always talked about that but lately it's as if opportunity have presented itself for me to take advantage of by using these opportunities to prove what i have been talking about and i may be looking trying too hard to be believed or trying too hard to prove all that i have been saying you know over the years that is not really the case it's just the opportunities comes and i like to take advantage of them yeah when it comes to issues that i've talked about before with no evidence to back up so when evidence finally fly i like to catch it and then show it to you so that's why in this video we are taking a look at ruth ogunleye a female military officer from nigeria who got dismissed from the army because of what we are going to see in this video and i would like you to please watch this video with an open mind and give your sincere opinion and i wish that this video will reach out to at least 500,000 Ghanaian women so that after that you see your men you kiss them you will love them you appreciate them some more i know you guys value your men you value everything about your country but it's going to triple when you see this video let's watch it together and please do it to like this video as we go straight into taking a look at Ruth Ogunleye's story together okay. I, a year before i was posted to abukan i was serving in jos plateau state um three diff medical center then thereafter i was later posted to Kantumek medical center where i met kone ib abrikarin as the the oc the the commanding officer there he when i came and said, i was the only private soldier then there and the youngest soldier there too so he he started by buying me gifts which i refused to collect and there i was very surprised and he called me to an hotel that you meet him in Igusto Hotel opposite Ojo Cantonment Medical Center uh, Ojo Cantonment um, when I got there he asked me to sleep with him promising me to promising me if I if, if I allow him to sleep with me he will allow me to go to school and he will he promised to give me 50 ton of cash as at that sum of 50 ton and that very day which I refused because uh, in the army it's against the law is called frontalization you don't frontalize with your senior um thereafter that's how the whole thing started it started by maliciously malicious and uh, maliciously dealing with me by putting me on extra duty i called that one army work is part of the job sending me to guard rooms dealing with me all of a sudden he started threatening me that if i did not sleep with him he would dismiss me from the job okay when all this was going on when he asked you to visit him in the hotel and you went and you refused his advances did you report this to anybody or did you tell anybody about yes, this yes i did who did you report this to i told lasco personia nota she was my godmother okay i told her i was like ah 
she made me people say this man is a very harsh man like why is he disturbing me? this man is like he has been disturbing me for months now so she just advised me just to like you know ignore the the threat that is part of army work that was what she advised me she was the only person you told yes and at first i was not paying attention to his threat and everything it was when he started giving me injection you know um first fully sleeping with me after giving me injection hold on giving me injection how how did he give you injection where did you meet for him to give you those we work injections? in the same office he's yes. my ceo okay and we work in the uh, mrs it's called hospital it's in the army it's called mrs so he will instruct some soldiers you know in the army they give order and you don't disobey others so he will instruct those boys to pay me that most times then when people are not available most times you put Point go at me during the day or at night during the day witness the everybody people are there, are seeing, there all this seeing everything i have and a nobody asks questions yes ma, i have a video of it you have video recording of this particular, particular incident. incident that happened continue he there's a day i got to find out that he normally sleep with me after injecting me there's a day he uh, there's this before much of army staff um retired general farouk yaya wife came to commission a particular place the maternity part in our hospital so when she came before that they already gave me digestion and i was putting out a strong uniform and the of, uh, army office wear so all of a sudden i saw dr cosmos i think the third day dr cosmos the copper he, he was serving there in our hospital he came and gave me another injection which flushed out those one they gave to me before and i saw myself naked and he now asked me to pass the back door that uh, in our uh, they are outside now now as they are their their officer's wife and association they were outside that very day so i got my my body was stained and they stripped me naked inside the hospital inside his office his office so immediately the woman came he now instructed one of the serving a uh, copper the one that was serving with us that time cosmos and he told cosmos to go and give me gesture and asked me to pass the back door this is this is very 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 strange so all of these things that you say ha happened when you're unconscious yes and after the, after giving me the gesture after harassing me sexually he will put me inside this body bag in the arm in it's called, it's called body just like a casket he will put me inside this made i think they mostly using the in the uh, noticed because for, for them to go and get casket and everything so you just call, it's called body bag so they, you will just put me inside that body bag and for some hours they will now ask them to take me to psychiatry hospital that is how this issue of mental illness that started so apart from your godmother that you told when initially when he was making advances at you up to that up to this very moment that time you didn't tell anybody i, I sought for redress in the okay. army you cannot fight your senior in the army you cannot you cannot beat your senior okay you cannot ask your senior to go to gardroom okay. you always sought for redress i i you seek for redress okay. so i sought for redress and so how did you go about that at first it was frustrating because i i wrote an the it was handwritten application through the same person that was frustrating me okay. so he never forwarded my application so i have to i have to go to because the team was he, he kept on coming to my house send the boys to my house he denied me access to military course denied me so many things in the army i spent five years in the army without so when you noticed that you were trying to the, the redress you were trying to get couldn't yes get to the yes authority. i went to the never uh, ml abubaka he was the provost um commander provost group commander it's one diff he's a provost marshal what did he say i ran to him he intervened okay and he said um even if say she de, i'm just trying to like even if she demand as far as she have the sense to write for redress they should attend to her okay so because she because this the general was the uh, uh, military police and they were scared of him mm -hmm. so they quickly set up a board and the end of the day they didn't ask me to present any evidence they just like wow me like bullshit me and okay so now the the redress you were seeking like a panel was set up yes was set to up. inquire into yes to intervene yes. yes 
and they didn't call you for question nobody called you to ask you any question they, they called me okay. because i i wrote that address like four times before they attended to it okay. because abu karim Kone abu karim they are the most senior officer in the medical corps so he has that level he has that um he's a senior officer so so when i went to i have to go to military police to report to the provost marshal so he, he intervened and he said they should hold that board and intervene and know the the that they should disc they should intervene and know the reason why abu Kami is doing doing this to you yeah. yes so when they intervened like just the way you are interviewing me now they never asked me for witness evidence because mm -hmm. they are all the same they are all cosmates the people that set up set up that but they are abrukami cosmates so they, they were supporting they were biased they never normally 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 in a country where women are human do you know what's supposed to follow this has made it to social media this has made it to media houses a lot of people are interested it has become like a national issue so people are interested don't Odike will love it Omotola Jalade Genevieve Onachi you would think that oh okay yeah people like that are interested or Ministry of Women Affairs and Youth Empowerment or the amazing activists online Aisha Yesufu would be interested in this case and they're all coming together to deal with this army officer but because my country is like Papua New Guinea do you know Papua New Guinea Papua New Guinea is a twin country of Nigeria and they are located at the Pacific Ocean I'm working on a video of them and very soon you'll see that video but before we get to Papua New Guinea the twin brother of Nigeria let's take a look at the response the action that has been taken against the army military officer being accused of molestation physical abuse mental abuse and rape of a military junior officer so let's watch that and i'll be back <laughs> <laughs> The Nigerian army had cleared Colonel I.B. Abdukarim of wrongdoing following allegations by a now discharged female soldier, Private Ruth Ogunle, that the superior officer and other officers, including Colonel G.S. Ogo and Brigadier General I.B. Solebo, made life hell for her and that they should be held responsible if anything happened to her. Army spokesperson Major General Oyema Wacheko said the Army investigated the claims and discovered that Ms. Ogunle was mentally unstable. Uh, she refused medical help, which necessitated her discharge from the Nigerian Army. Ex-Private Ruth Ogunle joins me live from our studio in Abuja. Ms. Ogunle, thank you for talking to us. It's important that I make clear that we have strict rules by the NBC when it comes to defamation and false accusations. So I'd like you to strict, um, strictly answer the questions, if you can, you know, within the framework of the law guiding our business. The Army claims that having done their investigation that you were mentally unstable and that was what informed your discharge you know from duty how do you respond to that thank you very much sir i was not discharged from the army i i sought for a voluntary discharge i wrote for voluntary discharge that was approved by the army through the intervention of the Minister of Women Affairs. So I was not discharged from the army. I I sought I seek for I, I, I wrote a discharge that was approved by the authority. I was never discharged from the army, sir. All right, so the position of the Nigerian army is that you were recommended for discharge on medical grounds since twenty twenty two but that uh, being a sympathetic um, organization uh, they taught it wise to give you the best medical treatment possible uh, to stabilize you before discharging you talk to us about the kind of medical engagement that you had while still with the military um while 
I was with Kone Ibi Abrikan, there was never any medical treatment. He he forced me by giving me like by giving me like a tea injection. Um, probably raped me, um, raped me and put me inside a body bag. Pop, um, it called casket in the army, a body bag in the army. And at the end of the day, he will take me to psychiatry hospital to make it look as if I'm actually mad. There's nothing like madness. I never received any treatment from the army. There was no treat. There was no uh, medical treatment, and there was no. Uh, there's no medical reports that I have made mental issue. You have made huge allegations against the colonel, including allegations of rape. You just mentioned that you were put in body bags. Were there witnesses who also were there when these things happened? And did you, were you involved in the investigation process that led to your dismissal? Um, sir, at first, he, the unit, my, my, Previous units in a uh, Ojo Cantonment Medical Center, they are all my witness because he's, he never hide it from anyone I mean, because he felt he's the CEO and he's the commanding officer. Nobody can check him. So he's the commanding officer. Nobody can check him. And he, there, is, there are eyewitness. He injects me. Uh, I can call names here. He instructed um, Sergeant Udo to inject me. Um, Dr. Cosmos, while he, he handcuffed me and put me inside that casket. So there was nothing like medical inex. So he did what he did because I refused to sleep with him. I don't want to place curses on anyone, so let's stop watching. If you want to see the full video, it's trending on all social media platforms. And <laughs> oh my God, a country called Nigeria. Okay, fine. At this point, I believe my point has been proved. I have convinced you to believe what I've been talking about for three years. That in Ghana, women are human. I hope you understand. So Ruth has not gotten justice. She has been dismissed from the army. The same army that I, a foreigner, sat down here to celebrate the beautiful military women in Ghana. I made a video celebrating the Ghanaian police women. Yeah, but in my own country, there is nothing to show you. This is what I have for you because this is what you get as a woman in my country. Or should I now sit down now and make a video celebrating this? And you can see that the interviewer, the first one, the lady is asking her, are you really sure about this? That is a Nigerian woman saying that to a fellow Nigerian woman. Are you really sure about this? So, I mean, what is that point exactly that the journalist is trying to make? Like that she don't believe that things happen to women like that on a daily basis in Nigeria. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't blame her. It's a normal thing with us. When it has not happened to you, it's nothing. When it happens to them, you see them crying blood. They will come here. Oh, my husband. Uh, this, uh, my Nigeria have happened to them. Oh, hell. But when it happens to other people, they will give you a name. Ruth Ogunleye, I'm sorry to say, might never get justice, but I'm praying that God will send her help so that she can be taken out of that danger zone. You see me crying. I'm not crying for Ruth because you know why? Ruth is not the first. What she has gone through is nothing compared to the reality of what people are going through back home. Women, sorry, before I make a mistake, what is people? Women are going through back home, women and children. It's nothing compared. It's nothing. In her case, she could stand up and fight for herself, like by coming on social media. When she made the first post, because she's using an Android phone, she does not have all the lights that I'm using now to make my video pop. She's uh, making the video from a low camera quality phone. People are like, See who talks a whole general want to sleep with her. See her, she ugly. Now that she has come to the limelight, like to the journalist office, you know, to the media offices, the media houses where they have all the great equipment to show her true color, what she looks like. Can you see how beautiful she is? And that is a lady with no makeup, no proper dressing up, just a natural, pure soul. You know why my heart breaks for Ruth? Ruth is just a good girl and we have a lot of them in Nigeria. I, Lillian, is not one of them, okay? 
And the sad thing for me is that good girls are always the ones that suffer this type of trauma that Ruth is suffering. That good Nigerian girl, that pure innocent girl that wouldn't go against the law. She said it is called fantalization according to the military profession. You're not supposed to have an affairs with your senior sexual affairs, right? So she won't obey that. She wants to keep to the law. But guess her reward? This is it. She's suffering, going through all that. And you see, they said she suffered mental ailments. She said that they, she was injected. So people don't believe her. That is Nigeria for you. But you know where my heart breaks? I feel like this man should have just gone for other Nigerian women. Nigerian women are ready to say yes to a man as big as that man is. I won't mention his name with my mouth before they will say their grandmother have talked about them. A lot of Nigerian women are going to, they are queuing up to say yes to him because at least he can feed them, he can give them food to eat. They eat, chop well, eh? my husband, it doesn't matter if he have 100 wives, as long as he brings food, they chop, they eat. But no, this man will not go there. He wants the one, a pure soul, the only angels we have, the few little angels we have left in our country. The ones you look and be like, okay, with this type, I think there's hope for Nigeria. He wants that one so he can destroy it. If not, why you? Why? Why this girl? Why not other girls? Because she's not the only one in the army. She's not the only light skin. She's not the only fine girl. She's just an innocent girl. And a lot of them, like Roots, fall prey to this uh, situation in, in my country. And this is what happened to you when you obey the laws, when you obey the rules of the land, you will suffer. Now they have just covered it up. And you tell me that is a country that will know what peace is. It's going to be hard. There's, there can't be peace. But see, the beauty in all of this is that these people don't end well. Go to their houses and see what their families, what their kids are going through. Someone sent me a video of a Nigerian boy that beats his father, beats him, slap him, push him to the ground. If I can find that video, I'll post it here. Sorry, this can happen to you even if you are a good parent, you are a good person. You don't treat other people's kids bad. You don't do harmful things. It can still happen to you, yeah? That's life. But sometimes people are paying for their sins because of what they do to other people's children. How you destroy the life of another child that is not your own just because you have the power to do so so you see what Ruth is going through that is how it is a normal thing in nigeria and my worries for her is don't be surprised that you might wake up oh my sister passed away today somebody shot her and nothing will happen nothing will happen no investigation no nothing the, the, the man whoever did it no problem you can kill and go if you want and they come and sit down at this point you understand why we don't there's no peace in my country because there are so many innocent blood crying out for justice the ones that are living and the ones that are no longer alive blood of the innocent people like Ruth Ogunle crying out for justice this girl lives in her house she's tortured the, the mental trauma of someone who oppressed you still being the one to be acquainted of the accusation that you were able to write against him you, you came up you courageous enough to say this is what this man did to me the system cover him up and frame you and make you the accused become the guilty the bad one and you see her fellow women would tell her uh -uh, waiting day day uh -uh. she went as soon as they won't call her person husband yeah? no humanity no no nothing no love for women no oh my goodness you see me crying i'm not crying for roots i'm crying for my children i want to go home i keep saying this it sounds like a joke i won't go house charlie i want to go home it is my right to live in my homeland peaceful corner of nigeria but you know what i'm afraid of going you know why because of my children i feel like i'm sending them back to the very beginning the darkest country in the world apart from papa new guinea ruto <laughs> gunle a good nigerian girl honest nigerian soldier framed hey you see that why is she the only one what about the other ones do you know if the other ones are doing it they are playing along to avoid being in rude situation it makes sometimes you begin to think i bet this man they asked me out a lecturer is asking me out and if i don't agree to his demands it means going to give me carry over and then you see another girl that agrees to him graduating and even having first class 
and going out there and be celebrated and just nothing happened to her no karma no nothing you that want to play decent you want to act so when you don't see a lot of them coming out to complain it's because they are playing along for those that are saying is she the only one in the command there are other girls you know what other girls are doing some of them are playing along because you to avoid you being in this situation where is this lady's where is she going to go right now how is she going to pick up her life what is she going to become she's living in fear my heart goes out to Ruth Ogunle. i just want people to see i'm making a video about Papua New Guinea and Nigeria so you get to see what I'm talking about okay you see how women are being treated in Papua New Guinea and how they are being treated in Nigeria and then you tell me if it's not the same please google Papua New Guinea Biko go on YouTube and look for that country and so this is the reality of life for women and so at the end of the day the point I'm trying to make in this video apart from wanting to give my voice to the story of Ruth Ogunleye is that this is the reality of life for women I mean this is what I have been talking about this is what I mean when I say women are not being treated right in Nigeria and I hope that I get so many people see this video thank you for watching I will see you in my next one